I paint self-portraits, Frida Kahlo once said. Because I am the person I know best, I paint my own reality. The only thing I know is that I paint because I need to, and I paint whatever passes through my head without any other consideration. Frida Kahlo produced some 70 self-portraits, tense, vibrant works that chart not only the changes in her face and feelings, but also the events in her life. Love, loss, politics, surgery, and most often her abiding passion for her husband, the great Mexican muralist Diego Rivera. What passed through Frida's head was some of the most original and dramatic imagery of the 20th century. Perhaps Frida's most astonishing self-portrait is My Birth, in which she portrayed herself emerging from her mother's womb. It is, as she put it, how I imagined I was born. As in all her self-portraits, a single eyebrow across her forehead identifies the infant as Frida. Above her mother's bed is an icon, the Virgin of Sorrows, pierced by swords, bleeding and weeping. Just the kind of imagery that Frida's devoutly Catholic mother cherished. Rivera recognized the courage behind Frida's images. He said, Frida is the only example in the history of art of an artist who tore open her chest and heart to reveal the biological truth of her feelings. The only woman who has expressed in her work an art of the feelings, functions, and creative power of woman. The 1937 self-portrait, My Nurse and I, is a declaration of faith in the continuity of Mexican culture. Frida, as an adult artist, continues to be nourished by her Indian roots. She wrote of the painting, I appear with the face of an adult woman and the body of a baby girl in the arms of my nana. From her nipples falls milk as from the sky. I came out looking like such a little girl and she's so strong and so saturated with providence that it made me long to sleep. The nurse's Teotihuacan funerary mask evokes the ritual savagery of the Mexican past. And Frida appears to be at once protected by the nurse and offered as a sacrificial victim, hardly the image of a cuddled, satisfied infant. She imbibes, along with the milk, a terrible knowledge of her own fate. In a diary that Frida kept during the last 10 years of her life, Frida recalled her origins. In Coyoacan, my first cell was hatched. It was incubated in the womb of my mother, Matilda Calderon from Oaxaca. Frida portrayed herself at the age of two together with her forebears and her birthplace. In my grandparents, my parents and I, painted in 1936. Standing naked and self-possessed in the patio of her home, Frida holds a crimson ribbon. It connects Frida to her parents and to her two sets of grandparents, her maternal grandparents of Mexican origin and her paternal grandparents of German origin. The portrait of Frida's parents was taken from their wedding photograph. Frida once said of herself, I have my father's eyes and my mother's body. Her mother was a beautiful, intelligent woman, but Frida rebelled against her conventions and her Catholicism. Her father was her favorite, and she identified closely with him. He was a well-educated, silent, sardonic atheist, and he had a special tenderness for Frida. Frida is the most intelligent of my daughters, he would say. She is the most like me. The son of Hungarian Jews who had migrated to Germany, Kahlo emigrated to Mexico in 1891 when he was 19. In 1952, 11 years after her father's death, Frida painted his portrait 
basing the likeness on a photograph that he took of himself. His brow is furrowed, his eyes are large and shining, like the eye of his camera beside him. I painted my father, Wilhelm Kahlo, of Hungarian-German origin, artist, photographer by profession, intelligent and fine. Valiant because he suffered for 60 years with epilepsy, but he never stopped working and he fought against Hitler. With adoration, his daughter, Frida Kahlo. The story of Frida Kahlo's life begins and ends in the same place. From the outside, the building looks very much like the other houses in an old residential section of Mexico City called Coyoacan, except that its blue walls are more dazzling and the words Museo Frida Kahlo are inscribed over the portal. The entrance is guarded by two gesticulating giants. These paper mache Hudas figures are exploded on the day before Easter, a ritualistic purging of the memory of Judas who betrayed Jesus. Passing them, one enters the garden with tropical plants. Frida and Diego lived here, 1929 to 1954. In the garden is a pyramid that Rivera built for his large collection of pre-Columbian objects. Inside, there is a collection of more than a thousand retablos, which Frida and Diego collected. These tiny tin paintings, commissioned for a small fee, are gifts of gratitude for a miracle that has been performed. They depict a near escape from disaster, together with the holy agents, usually the Virgin or Christ. One day, when Frida was 18, she was taking a bus home. A trolley approached the bus and kept on coming, as if it had no brakes. Frida recalled, the train smashed the bus against the corner. It was a strange collision. It was not violent, but rather silent, slow, and it harmed everybody, but me most of all. Frida's body was almost destroyed in the accident. Her spinal column was broken in three places. She had a triple fracture of the pelvis from the steel handrail that had literally skewered her body, entering her hip 
and coming out through the vagina. The doctors did not expect her to live. Looking at the healthy young woman in the photograph taken by her father on February 27, 1926, one can hardly believe that four and a half months earlier she had nearly died. She has carefully placed her left leg in front of the right one to hide the disparity in size. In another photograph taken the same day, Frida wears a man's three-piece suit. Even at this early age, it is apparent that clothing played an important role in Frida's self-presentation. She said, I never thought of painting until 1926, when I was in bed on account of an automobile accident. Her first subjects were those convenient to an invalid, portraits of friends and family. 